Hello. All right. Today we're going to go over the 11 most common symptoms of stress, that stress is just too damn high and that you need to stop, reset, reevaluate before these stress symptoms, excuse me, can escalate into something worse. So let's go over it. Just a quick review of 11 symptoms. All right, let's get started. most common symptoms that we see that stress is just too high and you need to stop and reset and figure out ways to help you manage your stress better because stress is a killer we all know that uh, and it can present itself in lots of different ways and we're gonna hit a few of those the most common ones I would say if you present with two or three or more of these symptoms, you really need to find some ways to help manage your stress, okay? So number one is neck pain. Typically we see it like right here at the base of the neck, it's where muscular tension is held and it just starts right there at the base of the neck and that's where you see it a lot um, when stress is high. I hold mine typically like here uh, in my traps and if my stress is high and I'm off a little bit and I go into a workout, um, and, and I got a lot of stress in my, my neck here, my upper back, it will lead to me pulling something and being off and off balance uh, and having to wear an icy hot patch for a week and stretch and work on it. Um, so stress can ball up your muscles and make things super tense, as we all know. Next is headaches, same kind of thing from that muscular tension, that just uh, grinding of the teeth is very common with stress. Um, I, honest, I personally do this at night. I had no idea I did it. Um, but I went to the dentist, they're just like, you are grinding your teeth like crazy. So they made me a night guard at night to keep me from grinding my teeth so much um, from stress. Um, so nausea, nausea comes because typically when we're so stressed, I think we've all felt that, like you're so stressed that you can't eat. And when we get stressed, our body will conserve energy, right? It's, it's signal, it signals stress as a mechanism that it needs to fight against, basically. So it's, its main focus then is to conserve energy. So we're conserving energy, we're not digesting our food as well. It can cause nausea, basically. Uh, hair loss is another one, again. Met, um, high stress messes with hormones, hormones can then mess with hair loss. Weight gain, this is probably the biggest one. So. Cortisol is a big, big factor. Cortisol is a hormone and it is a big factor in stress and sleep. And I have another video on sleep and how cortisol can affect your sleep and actually affect weight gain. Why you would gain weight if you're doing everything the same, but like exercise is the same, food intake is the same, but you start putting on weight with high stress situations. You can check out that video on my YouTube channel as well. But, and that goes more into this with the weight gain and the stress and what happens with the cortisol levels and why we might be putting on weight, but yet we're doing everything the exact same. So weight gain. Acne, again, is induced cortisol. It's that cystic, hard, red acne that you might be getting due to stress. Uh, again, it comes back to our cortisol levels. Rapid heart rate. So this is one I've experienced too as myself, or for myself and have had clients um, that have literally gone to the ER thinking they were having a heart attack and it was anxiety. Um, and again, it's just that, that stress can compound and become so cumbersome and it's your body's response to trying to fight off that is it's increasing the heart rate because it's, it's that fight or flight thing that we get. It's feeling the, the amount of stress, it's your body is sensing like a bear is getting ready to attack you or something like that. So all the adrenaline starts pumping and all the responses start coming from the body in order to run or fight from that bear, right? So that turns into a rapid heart rate. Insomnia. Again, I've experienced this. Stress, obviously I, I've stressed. And I'm working really hard on my stress uh, because I know all these things, but it's hard when you run a business by yourself, you know, and a new mom and all that kind of stuff and trying to find balance, it's hard. It's very stressful. It's very stressful. So I work really hard to identify these, to help my clients identify these, to find tools to help you deal with these and to reduce stress in your life. And I'm gonna talk about a few of those at the very end. Um, so insomnia, not sleeping well. Again, this is due to cortisol levels. We've got those stress levels up. Cortisol is off, our circadian cycle is off. We are not sleeping well. This one I struggle with a lot. 
you get sick often. Um, I, do, I have clients like every six weeks they are sick. Something is going on, they're sick. Um, and it's just because your immunity is dropped because your stress is high. Again, your body's trying to conserve energy and one of the things that gets dropped is immunity. Your, your ability to fight off colds, flus, whatever it may be, sicknesses. And you get sick more often. Next, irregular period uh, for females, uh, especially when they're under incredibly high stressful situations. Cortisol levels are elevated, which means estrogen levels are elevated, which means that you're going to have an irregular cycle. And then last but not least is fatigue. No matter, even if you're getting good sleep and um, you know, you're know you hydrated and stuff like that, but you just can't kick the fatigue because you're in a high stress situation, um, that is a sign as well. So a couple things that I use to work on stress is first and foremost is therapy, guys. Never underestimate therapy. Therapy is a fantastic tool to use to help you manage your stress, use tools to, te to teach you tools to manage your stress, your stressful situations, so that you don't start to have these physical symptoms of what stress is doing to your body. So therapy is fantastic. The next thing that I recommend is CBD oil. CBD oil is great for anxiety and helping uh, you to feel better. It'll help with insomnia, it will help with acne, uh, it will help with a lot of these things, nausea, the headaches, all that kind of stuff. My next go-to is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is an adaptogen, you can find it anywhere. It is fantastic for helping to reduce stress and anxiety as well. And then last but not least is a product called Cordy's by New Ethics um, Company. And I am an affiliate with that company, but it is a fantastic, it's a cortisol manager. So it helps to metabolize cortisol and help regulate your cortisol levels um, or increase cortisol if that's needed, um, your levels to help you deal with your stress. So the Cordy's, the ashwagandha, and the CBD oil are like my triple threat or my supplement protocol that I throw at clients that have high stressful situations to help take the edge off of them so that they can step back for a second and then face whatever the stress, stressful situation is head on and help them feel better. Because if you feel better, you'll feel like you can manage your stress better. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I have more about this. I have a full blog on this as well where it's written out. If you would rather read it than listen to me talk, you can check that out on my website. Give me a thumbs up on this if you like it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love to have you on there. Give me any comments, feedback, or things that you would like to hear more about. Uh, if you're checking this out on my social media, you can get the link above up in my profile uh, and have access to any um, of my information. So, all right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.